Bob, what's going on, man? Oh, hey. Hey, boy. How are you? Sorry I couldn't get on video. My uh, <laughs> computer wasn't compatible with that. I just do Zoom for some reason. Yeah, well, we're, we're glad to have you on, uh, Glenn. I re- greatly appreciate you coming on the show uh, and talking with us. And just as we mentioned, we are live, so I just want to let you know that we are and we're actively on all three platforms. Uh, Glenn, I-, I wanted to start here, and I'm going to give you the floor first on that. I was listening to you on a podcast on Saturday Down South when you talked about the LSU stuff with Gloria Scott. And and mentioning that, you said the LSU releasing the video or or audio on her was a little bit sloppy. I'm going to give you the floor first, as as I mentioned. What did you mean by that? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I thought it was obvious that that Miriam Seeger and Bird Josbury were both trying to get uh, the representative of Gloria Scott to – you know, say that uh, they were trying to get money, which 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 they were, but they kept saying how much, how much, and I I just thought it it made them look bad. I mean, because that was all after the fact. Uh, you know, Darius had already done what he did, and the LSU officials didn't really seem concerned about Darius or his his behavior or, or doing anything about it or how Miss Scott was doing. You know, they were just trying to uh, see if. Um, you know, this this guy wanted money from him, and uh, you know it didn't it didn't help Gloria Scott's or her family's uh, credibility. But I don't I don't think it made LSU look too good either. Well, on that basis, when you say it didn't make LSU look too good, we have some stuff in there in reference to the Advocate and WBRZ asking for a a. a um, public records request on the audio and or documentation that they have on Gloria Scott. So if they're legally obligated to release this information, I guess, how does it not make them look good when they're legally having to do that? Um, well, LSU is not always doing what they legally have to do. I mean, they, they often fight public records requests. I mean, they, they release that tape to make themselves look good. I mean, that was, that was kind of a, a PR stance to uh, make themselves look good, and it it kind of it kind of worked because Gloria Scott and and her family got a lot of uh, you know negative uh, impact after that, and and it made LSU fans kind of feel better that this guy was trying to extort LSU, which he was. I mean, LSU didn't release that because of their belief in in state records laws they did it they released it to make themselves look better and i think it kind of backfired well glenn i mean with with all due respect they had to follow the law though i mean we can't make speculations on what they were and weren't going to do and we do have the audio on gloria scott specifically stating and i quote that miss gloria spoke with sharon and she's talking about sharon lewis and now gloria wants her money so are we not supposed to take that information that we've heard, literally heard that she left a voicemail on Miriam Seeger's voicemail and not think that her credibility is a little bit just not good? I mean, because at the end of the day, when you I go on, said that. I know, but I you haven't been saying that though, Glenn. I just said her credibility is bad. But you didn't say it on that but podcast. It, still make Darius Geis. it doesn't make Darius Geis any more innocent. No, but you know, but, but Glenn, the question that I would have for you, the sorry for really interrupting you, but the question I would have for you, I know that Darius Geis has not always been the best of human beings, but wouldn't we need to listen to him too? I mean, we have Gloria Scott's testimony. We have her lying a couple of times in the Hush Blackwell report and then, and then going on audio saying she wants money. The one person that we haven't heard from is Darius Geis. Is he not supposed to be heard? Well, you know, people have tried to talk to him, but, uh, and, you know, LSU hasn't released any interviews they had with Darius Geis. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's avoiding all interviews. I'm not sure how you could get in touch with him. He had a court case in the D.C. area. But, yeah, he, he, I would say he deserves to be heard, but he probably, he probably doesn't because that Gloria Scott accusation against him is the least of the accusations against him. I mean, he had two women at LSU in 2015 say that he raped them. 
So, uh, I mean, I can understand. I mean, he does deserve to say something, but I can understand why he's keeping quiet. He's, he's probably under the advice of his attorneys. And I understand that. And, and quite honestly, we have to let due process go go with that. Now, Glenn, a little transitioning on that uh, in reference to wh- when you're on the podcast with Saturday Down South, you talked about Ed Orgeron. And I'm going to give you the floor again on this one. Uh, d- where do you think LSU's stance is and Ed Orgeron's stance is and all of this Title IX stuff? Well, I don't think Orgeron, Coach Orgeron, is as directly involved in this as, say, Miriam Seeger and, and Verge Osbury and the Title IX director and Joe Oliva was when he was the athletic director. I think um, Coach Joe is kind of on the outside of it a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, I, I don't I don't think he should have been um, – I, I mean, I don't think his job is in any trouble over over this at this point i mean he's he's uh you know, i may have changed this story some people say with when, when he talked to gloria scott or if he didn't but again that's uh you know he's not as as heavily involved with keeping things quiet about drake davis and darius guide uh about their other accusations as uh osbury and seeger are so you talked about Miriam Seeger, and, and in that you said that you – and the end tonight that you both thought that both of those individuals should have been fired from their positions. Since they weren't fired in their positions, who does that fall on in your opinion? Who should be – now who should we be looking at? If we, if we have the stance of firing Verge, firing Miriam, then who does – now does it fall on? Does it fall on the president? Does it fall on someone in the athletic department? Glenn, who does that fall on in your opinion? Well, Thomas Galligan, the who just left, the uh, who is going to leave as interim president, I think he should have fired them. I mean, that was his call. It was it was up to him, according to the uh, the Hush Blackwell spokesman, Steve uh, Scott Schneider. Uh, you know that that was he he uh, Scott Schneider and Hush Blackwell did the report, but it was up to LSU to dispense to suspend people or or fire people. And they chose just to suspend um, Merriam and, and Verge. And when you read the Hush Blackwell report, you know, I mean, it, it, it sounds like more serious uh, action should have been taken. So what do you think should do now? What should happen now? I mean, I think that they felt that there should not have been any action or just the action that they took in the suspension. So what do you think that should happen now? Do you think that LSU can fire them? What do you what if you, if you were in that position and I hate to kind of put you on the spot here and feel free to you know because I know that it's a tough question to ask but what do you think LSU should do now moving forward? Well, the uh, I think the new president should come in and and fire him. It's, you know whoever the new president is and and the new president may look may reexamine that you know the uh, and he may listen to what the um, Senate Select Committee is, is uh, their investigation and, and some of their hearings is because those hearings were really ignited because no one was fired at LSU. That's how that kind of started. And then, you know, there's also a U.S. two U.S. Department of Education uh, investigations, plus the EEOC, uh, the, the uh, uh, Sharon Lewis's <clears throat> accusations have been turned over to the uh, Equal, Oppor- Equal Employment Opportunity. Uh, commission the EEOC so there's a lot for the new president to look at and he could he could re-examine uh those suspensions and take further action or he could not I mean LSU to its credit they did at least transfer Miriam Seeger to where she's not handling any accusations anymore of sexual misconduct and acting as a stopgap between the accusations and the title IX office you know now if those happen, they're going right to the Title IX office, which is what should have been happening in the first place. Glenn, a couple more questions, and I want to talk to you about your book that you're doing on on, on former LSU baseball coach Skip Berkman. Uh, you brought up Sharon Lewis, and she sued LSU for $50 million. Uh, I want to ask you about the USA Today article that came out in reference to Sharon Lewis. There were a lot, and I say a lot, but there were some mis- missteps in that article. Number one, they talked about 
Uh, Zach Mettenberger coming down after being kicked off of Georgia's team, and then he came, and then he was now part of LSU's team the year after. Well, that's not true, and that's actually false. So there were some inconsistencies in that article that they t- that the USA Today came out about Sharon Lewis. If there is a, if we're supposed to believe that they couldn't even find out when Zach Mettenberger was on campus and on LSU's team, are there a lot of things that we should believe in that article from the USA Today? Well, what was the what was the part that was incorrect about Mettenberger? I don't see what you're saying there. He, he so was, they're uh, saying they said that as soon as Zach Mettenberger got, I think it was a 2009 2010, got kicked off the University of Georgia's football team, and the very next good. year that he was on LSU's football team after some oh. accusations. So no, he wasn't, and that's clearly right, what right. they he say played, in the article. Uh, you're right. He played junior college. He played junior college one year. Yeah, that's. Um, well, so my question is, uh, is if they if they weren't able to do the due diligence there and that part of Zed Mettenberger, are we as fans, are we supposed to question the due diligence of what's happened else in that report? Well, USA Today has done, you know, probably 10 or 12 reports since last summer. And I would say more than 99 percent is correct. You know, it, Counting the Mettenberger mistake, I would say that's a minor mistake. They skipped over the junior college. I mean, the the point is LSU did take a player who had been kicked off. Now he never did anything wrong again at at LSU. Uh, but no, I, I think that was a minor mistake compared to the uh, huge amount of reporting that they did. There's been there's been no other mistakes in in their reporting. But Glenn, I no, guess my question. Oh, so, well, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, the USA Today stories, I can tell you, I mean, they have been extremely accurate. And, you know, the advocate usually doesn't quote other papers. Uh, you know, they don't, most papers kind of struggle to do that because they're not, they're giving somebody else credit. But the advocate has freely quoted the USA Today. I think that gives you some credence as to uh, the solid reporting they've done. Well, I guess from a fan's perspective, do you see that when they read that, and they read the simple fact that that's not the facts of what happened with Mettenberger and the due diligence wasn't done on that, that they would question other things in that report. Could you see their point of view on that? No, because I think it's really a minor mistake. I think you're making a a big deal out of a very uh, small mistake. Now, I will say the Mettenberger, it probably should never have been in the story to begin with because it's just not applicable to – to what's going on. I mean, Mettenberger, he, he paid his punishment uh, to Georgia, both uh, legally and he was kicked off the, the team and he had to go to a small college in, in Kansas and then he had to come to LSU and sit out a year. So I didn't see where that fit. I mean, for well, because and, and, and you know, Glenn, not got, to really got hardly any punishment. Not to really interrupt you, but it's in it's in Sharon Lewis's document that she filed with the federal government and the state. So for whatever well, reason, she's putting it in there for a reason, though. Well, no, not necessarily. Sometimes people just make mistakes. It's not It's not any kind of a reason. And, and that really didn't even help her argument if it was accurate. Right. I mean, there's plenty of other charges she has in there that that make that a, uh, you know, a viable lawsuit. So now some of the things are, are exaggerated, I would I would say, like like in uh, in most lawsuits. I mean, they have. Uh, I think, um, you know, some of the, uh, she, she says that she, she doesn't get, get as much salary as, as some other people who have been there equal time, but she also makes more money than other people that, that have been there equal time. And, and, you know, sometimes you, you don't get a promotion just because you don't get a promotion, you know, and she's trying to blame because she's a woman or whatever that she didn't get the promotion. Well, sometimes you don't get the promotion, you know, and, and, and that some of that in the lawsuit I thought was a little off as well. Glenn, uh, last thing on this, and then I want to get your book. I'm really excited to to talk to you about that because I think it's going to be extremely interesting. Um, in the you talked about LSU being the mafia, and it's kind of funny that an Italian's asking you what you mean about the mafia. Uh, I'm not going to go into details there, uh, but when you talk about LSU being a mafia, can you can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I said on that talk show that I said they were like the mafia. In fact, 
in the fact that they keep everything in the family and they've been together for so long. I mean, there's so many employees at LSU that have been there so long. And the fact that so many people were in on this cover up of Geis and Davis, you know, Osbury, Seeger, the Title IX office, the LSU police, the athletic director. That, that's what I meant by the mafia. And, and after I said that, you know, the RICO portion of the uh, of the lawsuit was mentioned in that story. And, you know, RICO, RICO means racketeer influence and corrupt organizations, which was in that story. So, I mean, I said that before that came out. So it's not a complete reach. And I just said like the mafia. I didn't say they were the mafia. Got you. Like well, I well let me apologize. Well, then let me apologize for misconstruing your words. I I don't want to do that. Um, and reference to saying that they're like the mafia. The only question, Glenn, that I have to ask is is that outside of Sharon Lewis and outside allegations that we have, do you think that we have enough proof other than he said she said on some things? Now, again, I'm not saying one side's right. I'm not saying one side's wrong. My question is is do we have enough uh, uh, evidence and due process to start convicting people of crimes that they may or may not have con uh, committed. It's a lot more than he said, she said, because it's Hush Blackwell said. And LSU hired Hush Blackwell. LSU paid Hush Blackwell to expose LSU. So it's a little more than just the victim and the accused, which is he said, she said. This is a uh, voluminous investigation by an LSU hired firm that that made this uh, discovery. Now, you know, it, it, it may not go to the trial stage, so you may not get the due process, but it's to answer your question. It's 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 much more than he said. She said, and just judging from the reaction of LSU's university, President Galligan, other officials, even though all they did was suspend two people. I mean, they did admit that they really handled this wrong. Glenn, I, I, I get what you're saying, and but there are some things in the Hush Blackwell report that still need answered on both sides, and I agree with you there. But some things that we were that we found in the Hush Blackwell report that was reported earlier did not come out to be facts. And in reference to Sharon Lewis, do you think it's a little suspicious that we've heard an audio release from Gloria Scott saying that we that she spoke, and I'm quoting again, that she spoke with Sharon Lewis and now Miss Glory wants her money. Do you think to find that any suspicious and or any credibility that we may look on on the behalf of Sharon Lewis? Yeah, as I said at the beginning of this show, her credibility was hurt by that coming out. Yeah. No, meaning, I, I, very rudely, I'm meaning of Sharon Lewis. So, meaning that we have audio of Gloria Scott saying that, that she spoke with Sharon. Now that Sharon has filed a civil lawsuit, a RICO civil lawsuit, the last thing that we heard is audio from Gloria Scott saying that she spoke with Sharon Lewis in an extortion of LSU. So we have a crime committee and committing by Miss Gloria Scott where she, com where she says Sharon Lewis's name. Why are we not talking about Sharon Lewis name being brought up in an extortion that is illegal? Well, other names were brought up, too. I don't, I don't see your point. Sharon Lewis wasn't involved in the uh, extortion plot. That was uh, Gloria Scott and her representative. and some Well, Glenn, she, well, Glenn, she mentioned her name, Sharon though. Lewis, but they also spoke to her, Jogsbury. I mean, they also talked to Miriam Seeger, but those people aren't in on the extortion. They were on the other end of it. So I don't, I don't see Lewis's connection to Gloria Scott that you're making. Well, we have the audio, Glenn. I mean, we literally have Gloria. I, I listen to the audio. I listen to the audio. The so audio then how do we not have the connection? Gloria Scott, because I don't know what you're talking about with Sharon Lewis. The audio was. She, Gloria, was, no, uh, WBRZ Gloria has audio Scott release. Representative talking to, to, to Miriam Seeger and. Berge Osbury. Yes. No, they're WBRZ they're released an audio saying that Miss Gloria Scott left an email from Miriam Seeger specifically stating on a voicemail that she spoke with Sharon Lewis and now she wants her money. So we had at that exact moment. But what did she speak to Sharon Lewis about? That's my point. Sharon Lewis about? That's that's my point. We have a crime being. The weather? They could have been talking about the weather. I mean, okay, so they could have been talking about the weather. We don't know. But why is that not being reported is my question. So everything's being recorded. I don't think it's news. 
I mean, what was news about that was that they were trying to get money from LSU by talking to Miriam Seeger and Burge Osbury. I don't think Sharon Lewis was, you know, in, involved in that. Maybe she's in the report because they talked, but so were some other people she talked to. You know, Gloria Scott was trying to call anyone at LSU to see what might happen to this athlete who, you know, harassed her. Glenn, I think that we're just missing boats on on that question. I mean, it's kind of like for me to to this point, if let's just say hypothetically Darius Geis did, again, allege, because I, I don't know what happened, but did do this to Gloria Scott and there was witnesses. If witnesses saw it, would not witnesses need to be put in front and say what happened between Darius Geis and, and Gloria Scott? So now that we have audio saying that she spoke with Sharon Lewis and now she wants money, I think that there should be questions answered there. That's what that's the point I'm trying to get across. Well, the first we heard of Darius Geis harassing this woman at the Superdome was from Hush Blackwell. Mm -hmm. That was not in any stories before it was in Hush Blackwell. And Hush Blackwell didn't even mention Sharon Lewis in, in their report. You know, they just they just mentioned what happened with, with Darius and um uh, actually Gloria's actually Glenn and they did. That, and after that, it was discovered from LSU that, that this group wanted money because of their conversation with Seeger and Geis. Actually, Glenn, they did put her, her name is in the Hush Black Girl report, a part of, right. of uh, on the Drake Davis stuff. So it was in the report. So, I mean, they're, they're not questions there with her, too. But, but Sharon Lewis wasn't in the report with regard to Darius Geis and Gloria Scott at the Superdome. No, the audio was, though. So, uh, so we have audio released from LSU. So, what, regardless of what Hush Blackwell says, LSU released that information uh, on the public records request. So, it doesn't matter if it was in the Hush Blackwell report or not, right? I mean, we have the audio. Questions have to be answered. I, I still don't get your contact with. There's no. There's, I, I just don't get what you're trying to say about Sharon Lewis and, and Gloria Scott. I, well, you know, if, if I mean. You know, I, I brought I brought up issues that I have with Sharon Lewis's lawsuit. Um, you know, I think maybe a lot of people are just angry that Sharon Lewis is, is suing LSU and and looking for stuff. But I mean, the 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 guys, Gloria Scott extortion that could have happened and did happen. I feel with Sharon Lewis not having a role in that. It's going to be interesting, Glenn, to see how everything, uh, uh, I guess, transpires in all of this. Uh, one last question. I really want to get to this uh, on, on this part. You're doing a biography on LSU, former LSU baseball coach and AD Skip Bartman. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what you're doing there. How much longer do you have on the book? And what are when should people expect that to come out about one of the greatest baseball coaches, if not the greatest baseball coach of all time? Well, I'm. Um I'm behind on that book because of so much going on at LSU. <laughs> for, for one thing, you know, you got the uh, <laughs> NCAA investigation of football and basketball, and then you have this entire Title IX issue. But I hope for it to be out uh, late this year and uh, and definitely before uh, next baseball season. But I still have quite a bit to do because Skip Bertman did a lot in his uh, career and life. You know, not only baseball coach, but he was a – great athletic director at LSU. And, uh, you know, we didn't have these issues we have now uh, when, when he was athletic director. So there's a lot on him as athletic director. And uh, obviously there's a chapter on each uh, championship and then on, and on the other teams that didn't quite make, didn't win championships like the, uh, the great college station team of, of 1989. And um, I'm actually working on the Warren Morris chapter right now warren morris is is uh has written a forward for the book which is really great oh wow uh so it's um i hope everybody likes it i mean i've really enjoyed uh doing it because there's just so many stories um mm -hmm. behind stories and um a lot of anecdotes and and it's just been fun to do but there's there's a lot there you know it's not like a book on one championship season which you see a lot you know <laughs> this right. is a book on five of those and how he built it and then how he became AD.
Uh, Glenn, in your in this for the fans, what is the number one thing, for, or maybe not the number one thing, but what was something that stood out to you that Skip Bergman told you uh, that you always just you know when someone gives you a really good nugget uh, uh, of information or or something that might change your life or you live your life by. Is there something that Skip told you that really just caught your eye when he said it? Wow. Uh, you know, w- one thing he says a lot is just to be try to be nice to people. You know, that's uh, that's that's one thing he said. And, and you know, he, he did that as he as he built his program. And he, he was always telling his, his players to do that. Uh, and you know, Skip's a guy who, who wasn't always nice. You know, when he was in a hurry or real busy, you know, he wasn't always nice to reporters. But most of the time, he, he was. Uh, but I, I think my most lasting memory of Skip is is how uh, how much fun he and the players had in Omaha, mm-hmm. win or lose. Because when when they got there, you know, when you get there, you've done something. Even if you don't win, if, if if you got there, you've done something, and that and his teams were always, except for maybe the first couple times he went, his teams when they went to Omaha, they were always the most relaxed team and confident, and uh, you know sometimes a little cocky too, like '97, <laughs> but but they were you you just knew they were going to win or come really close to it because the other teams seemed to cl- clutch up, you know, and and the LSU teams in Omaha, I mean, they were laughing goofing off at practice, you know, and uh, I, I think you saw that happen on, on those national championship Saturdays. Well, Glenn, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'll definitely read it uh, because anything on Skip Bergman and LSU Athletics, I'm, I'm definitely going to give it a read. Uh, before we let you out of here, tell everybody where they can find you on social media and, and stuff that you're doing. Oh, LSU beat tweet, which I don't need to say. All of your uh, followers are on me there. Uh, and, uh, and I'm at the um, advertiser.com uh, and um, uh, usatoday.com. But I, I, really, I really appreciate it. And uh, if I miss something on the uh, Sharon Lewis connection with um, Gloria Scott, go ahead and 